Hey guys, this is Ray Bango, and I have the good fortune of having several Facebook folks over here. Uh, I have Tom Okino with me, and I have Macinde Adiagbo. Did I say it right? You got oh, it. Okay, cool. He has by far the hardest name I've ever pronounced in my life. But, you know, the, they are two top software engineers for Facebook. I've also had the privilege of knowing Tom for some time because of his work on the Moot Tools project, so it's really cool. Um, so, guys, I'm, I'm glad you're here because I recently read about some of the improvements you were doing on JavaScript. And obviously, when you're talking about a site like Facebook, which is into the hundreds of millions of users, you have a bit tremendous impact on performance on any little tweak you do. So obviously from a client side perspective, there's a lot of things that I'm sure you guys are doing to optimize JavaScript to make sure that your pages load very quickly. So can you go a little bit into that and tell us what you guys are doing to make sure your users are, are you know, those requirements are met and you're leveraging it the right way? Yeah, so first of all, you know, we always try to do more with less. Uh, so McIntyre gave a talk here at JSConf about something that he came up with the, toward the middle of last year called Primer, which essentially tries to get basically all of the user interaction, everything that the user is going to try to do, whether it's you know submitting a form or clicking a link, um, and tries to have those things available to the user as soon as the page loads, uh, rather than as soon as they can see content, rather than waiting for all the JavaScript to download. Mm -hmm. um, so we've distilled things down to you know basic links get clicked, we catch right. those events, and we can send off async requests. Forms get submitted, we catch those form submissions, and we can do those asynchronously as well. Um, so how are you how are you tackling some of the blocking stuff then? Because if you're trying to get you're trying to get that that the as much as that on the page before the content loads, so obviously there's some blocking issues that have to come into play. So what are, what are some of the techniques you're getting around that? Right, so actually, what, what the nice thing about Primer is it's a, it's a relatively small set of JavaScript, nice. and it will load dynamically whatever it needs. Oh, great. So one nice thing is that it baked into that is kind of telling the user that something's going on. Oh. So when, it, when the user clicks, Primer will immediately add a kind of a loading class to whatever they clicked on. Uh, so through CSS, the spinner will appear gotcha. and give us time to you know kind of get things together and and respond to the, uh, to the action. So, oh, nice. So yeah, at so least you're really addressing the UX. On, right, so we're really big on responding very quickly and immediately, um, and then kind of when we get time, do what we need to do. Gotcha. And so what else are you, t are you doing to kind of make sure that that user experience is consistent and that it's fast? Yeah. What, what other techniques are you implementing on this? I, I, uh, we had a huge push, like, all of last year. Mostly towards the end, we push, started pushing a little harder for um, basically just all best practices that we can think of, mm -hmm. just implementing them. We do a lot of everything on it. Facebook, all our images are sprited. Um, you know, all the CSS is at the top of the document. Right. It's as small as possible. We try to reuse as much CSS as possible. We keep as much JS out of the head as possible. Obviously, Primer is the only thing that's really there these days. Um, but obviously, we have a lot of very rich interaction that we still want to work. Mm -hmm. um, what we end up doing, actually, is we pay the cost for what a user wants to do when they actually perform an action. Okay. So if you think about it, the user is not actually going to leave a comment on something every time that they load their home page. Um, but when they do, it's OK if they wait a little bit longer. And we're talking like a little bit longer uh, for us to be able to perform that action versus paying the cost for every page load. Um, so what we do is we basically defer all of the expensive stuff mm -hmm. until you actually interact with something. Right. Right. And one method that we have, that it hasn't, I don't think it's gotten too much coverage, um, that we've rolled out quite a while back, um, but now is actually just, actually just now being tested in Chrome, um, is something we call Quickly, which is basically our attempt to kind of Ajax the entire site. Okay. Um, and one really nice thing about it is it's, it's automatic. So when you click a link on Facebook um, in Firefox um, or IE, um, we'll actually catch that click um, and send an Ajax request to the server for that next page. And then when the response comes back, we'll substitute in the content of the new page, leaving the top now, the Chrome of the site, in place. So the nice thing about that is that we don't have to re-download any static resources like CSS or JavaScript. It's kind of already there. Um, and it's kind of just sitting behind the scenes, and the user doesn't know any difference. It makes the chat experience a lot better as well, because your chats stay open and active. So if you're talking with people, you can browse the site, and you don't see things flickering or opening and closing. Yeah. Um, it just makes for a really seamless experience. And also, you know, it ends up saving us quite a bit on the server, because we don't have to regenerate the same stuff over right. and over, different pieces of the page. So. You know, and speaking of the chat, I mean, the chat is obviously very awesome, in fact, to the point where you have instant messengers actually incorporating that. So obviously, right. you have a very good open API protocol and stuff. Uh, what, what did you? How did you guys build that? Was that using something like Comet, or did you, was this a homegrown implementation you guys did, or is it proprietary? You can't really talk about it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was sort of homegrown, but using just techniques that have already existed for a while. Um, the engineers that first built it used long polling. 
Uh, so basically we open a connection to the server and then when we have some activity happen, we send the response and then open a new connection. Uh, they How expensive was that though? Uh, expensive? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty expensive. Pretty we, expensive. Have, we have a few hundred boxes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, because so chat was chat was built in kind of the end of 07, early 08. Um, and back then, you know, things yeah. like Comet were just starting up. So right. we were, were kind of forced at that point to right. kind of roll our own stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a really impressive project. And they actually, for that one, they, they kind of dark launched it for a long time. Uh -huh. So, you know, we had, you know, 100 million users or something like that at the time. Right. And for a few weeks, those users were actually sending chat messages in the background of their browser just so we could test the back end right, right. Uh, to get it up to scale. Interesting. So it was a pretty, that was a pretty big uh, undertaking. And wow. we've been committed since the beginning of that project to kind of making it open. Um, Jabber took us longer than we uh, originally anticipated. It can be you know, pretty hard. And I mean, one of the problems is we grow so quickly is that now when you build a product, you have to build it at scale to start up. Right. Um, so when we were building Jabber, we we're building it for 400 million users on day one. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, now that that's out, um, yeah, it's very easy for, and now that's how I use it. I use it through Adium. So gotcha. um, it's great that now, you know, multi there are multiple ways to get to that channel. Absolutely. Now, I know you guys are really into open source. I mean, you guys have done a great job. I mean, just the, the whole PHP rewrite was amazing, and I think everybody's really happy about that. What, what about on the JavaScript side? What are you guys doing in terms of open source? Are, you, are there any code that you're going to be contributing anytime soon that the community can start leveraging? So I, a lot of people ask us, from day one at Facebook, uh, I was always a huge proponent of open source. Obviously, I've kept the open yeah. source community. Absolutely. Um, there is, you know, some rationale there why we haven't, you know, adopted one framework over another. And you know, basically, all of Facebook's client side code has some, you know, counterpart on the server side. So, for example, our async request class, which is what we use for making AJAX requests, uh, has an async response counterpart on the server. Um, all of our systems kind of work very well together, the front and back end, to kind of like handshake, so that we have one synchronous system, like gotcha. one unified system. Um, and we would have to like rebuild that on top of another framework, an open Makes framework. Uh, and at this point, it just like didn't make much sense. That being said, recently we experimented with Facebook Lite, a okay. Lite site. Um, it is since been removed. I think it's like on its way out, but. The purpose of that site was not to build a new Facebook, but rather to experiment with new technologies. Uh, one of the technologies that was, you know, developed there was a client-side technology uh, for basically very primer-like uh, event delegation. Uh, an element we have users interact with elements on the document, and we catch those events at the document level, mm -hmm. uh, and then we can interact with different callbacks and stuff like that. So. We have a system called Javelin. It's actually on GitHub. Um, it's, it's not completely open source. It's completely <laughs> open source. It hasn't been updated in a while, um, but we are going to be focusing on that some more in the coming months and awesome. trying to port most of that stuff over to our main stack. Um, in terms of open source JS, like we're huge proponents, and we're going to try and contribute as much as we can, and also you know leverage the open source community as much as we can. Yeah, yeah we'd actually. Yeah, not many people have heard stuff. about Javelin. Um, it's a really interesting. Um, framework. It's a, it's a full JavaScript framework um, that aims to just do a DOM. Gotcha. Um, so it does like event delegation, has some basic DOM things, it has you know, an AJAX library, but it's very small and very simple. Um, and it's, it was great for the lights. It's, it's exactly what we needed, uh, which is just something that's very small and get to the user quickly. Um, and just does it. It won't do crazy CSS selectors for you, um, but it's enough to build a fully featured website. That's awesome. Um, which is great. So if people are interested in that, they should by all means check it out on GitHub. Fantastic. Well, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me about some of this stuff. It's great. It's it's great. You guys are kind of constantly pushing the envelope because I think, you know, a site like like Facebook is going to be the leader in that type of optimization work. It's you guys are dealing with really things that most developers don't have to contend with, and so it's great to have you guys out there just really pushing that. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah, for being on there. It's All great right. to be somewhere like here where we can find great engineers. So uh, we are hiring. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for that. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Here, here I'll zoom in. Facebook's hey. hiring. Facebook.com slash careers. There you go. Let us know. All right, guys. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you.